What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room week six of the GBA season four. This week, we're going up against the Real Maril in a rematch interdivision against one of the top competitors in the league. So, Miguel, as uh, as you guys probably all know, he's got an incredible record right now. He's got one loss. And uh, we're going to be looking at the team I'm going to be bringing in order to try and deal him his second this season. So first we're going to go over the team of 11 that he's got. As you may remember from last time, Miguel is bringing Mega Lopunny, Thunderous Eye, Victini, Hydreigon, Florgis, Dewblade, Stoutland, Tentacruel, Chestnut, Escavalier, and Hippowdon. Now, let me reiterate some of the things that I brought up in the last locker room against Miguel. Uh, and go into a little more detail about what uh, went through my mind this time around. So, in my first three matches, which were all losses, I was kind of trying to play by my style of play outside of this draft league and trying to meet on the battlefield of what my opponents were trying to do, which means I tried playing weird defensive sets and some of them may have worked, but for unfortunate side effects of hacks and things like that, but I'm not going to complain about that. What I am going to point out is that's not the way I win in this league with this team. I drafted a team that has a lot of... You may see some movement back there. My girlfriend is asleep behind me. Um, <laughs> say hi, Ramsey. <laughs> okay. Um, she... <laughs> I lost my train of thought. What was I doing? Um, in this league, with this team that I've drafted, the way I counteract the flaws that my team has is by hyper offense. I've got to turn that on. That's worked for me in the last two matches, smart switching and hyper offense. And I'm going to try and do that again this time. Now the problem, Miguel, last time I was able to predict almost perfectly uh, the six Pokemon he was going to bring. I think I got one wrong. This time around, I have to consider whether or not he's going to try and bring the same team which was effective against me or something different. One thing I think is that he might not bring Tentacruel this time because I think he saw that hazards weren't a huge issue for him and I had a very difficult time setting them up anyway. That doesn't mean he won't bring it, but that's one Pokemon that was there before that I think might not be there now. Now I know he's bringing Chestnut again because he wants to counter the Mega Swampert. Mega Lopunny is a powerhouse, and I'm pretty sure he's going to bring it again. I think there's a possibility that he might bring Thunderous Eye this time. Now, he didn't bring it last time, and it doesn't match up really, really well against my team, but it does have a lot of... Uh, it's got a lot of speed, and it does have moves that can hit very hard against some of my, um, some of my sweepers. Um, I predicted he will bring Victini again. Victini did a lot of work. I think he still has the same mindset with Hydreigon, so I think he's bringing Hydreigon. Also, I should be writing this down. Uh, Lopunny, Thunderous, Victini, Hydreigon, Chestnut. One, two, three, four, five. See, this is this is where it starts getting hard. Because he's going to have to leave out some of his physical, or not some of his physical, some of his attackers. Um, last time he didn't bring Thunderous. Uh, he's got to bring Victini. It just matches up so well against me. He might not bring Thunderous. He'll probably bring Lopunny, but that's not a guarantee. Hydreigon again, another Pokemon, not a guarantee. Chestnut, though, he's got to bring it. It's just, it walls from here till another time slot. The thing is, the sixth slot becomes a problem because Hippowdon is a very good uh, wall for him, very good physical wall. I've got a lot of physical sweepers on my team. Escavalier is also a nice pivot for him, but I'm not sure about any of these, so I'm kind of leaving that one blank. But I've sort of tried to prepare for everything here because it's round two. And so let me show you the team that I'm bringing. This week I am bringing Rain, and my team is Electivire, Mega Swampert, Scizor. Politoed, Gudra, and Ditto. And let's go over these sets one at a time. Um, first of all, Viral the Electivire. Electivire is running Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Earthquake, and Hidden Power Flying with an Expert Belt. Now, I was really considering in that last slot running a uh, Fighting Stab because if I do that, then I hit every Pokemon on his team super effective against the Escavalier, except the Escavalier. 
The reason I ended up switching to Hidden Power Fire is that Ice Punch does not do enough to Chestnut, and I want everything on my roster to be able to take out Chestnut so that Ultron is in a great position to sweep. So he's running a very standard EV spread as fast as he can be with Lonely Nature to force his other threats to either give up and lose a speed battle or force them to speed counter speed creep with me. Um, max attack, and then the remaining four points literally don't do anything because I'm running Hidden Power Flying, so there's no place for me to pick up points. Watch me adjust this here. No special defense. No special attack. No defense. And no HP. At all. So I just have four throwaway points to put him into HP just because. Um, we've then got Ultron. Ultron's my Mega Swampert. Mega Swampert is running Waterfall, Earthquake, Hidden Power Flying, and Toxic. Now, Toxic was a last second change for me. Um, I was, I did have Outrage there, and I'm still not super sold on it, except that I think a good way for me to wear down a couple of switch-ins to Swampert, because there's going to be more than one. He's not just going to count on Chestnut to wall me for days. Um, you know what? I am going to, I think I am going to change it back, because I was thinking about it. One of the potential other people he might, no, he's not going to bring, I was thinking Dewblade maybe. Uh, Tentacruel is a safe switch if he predicts my move correctly. Um, and I, I'm not running Ice Stab on this because pretty much the only reason I was doing that... Well, you know what? Okay, I'm switching back to Outrage here. Um, the reason for that is... Uh, Waterfall in the Rain is going to one-hit KO Thunderous Eye, who is hit super affected by Ice Stab. The only other person I really use Ice Stab on is Hydreigon, and before I would use it on Chestnut, but now I have Hidden Power Flying which hits Chestnut for more, and Hydreigon is hit for more by Outrage, and Outrage is uh, a good stab if he doesn't bring Florges. If he does bring Florges, then I'll, I'll reevaluate whether or not I choose to use it ever. But that's going to be my set for Ultron. Uh, his EV spread is a unique one. Uh, max attack as is necessary, lonely nature so that I'm not dropping my special attack too much. Um, I'm not positive about that anymore actually looking at it. But I'm gonna leave it be for now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave that be. 100 speed EVs gets me to a speed EV, or to a speed tier in the rain where I can outspeed uh, Jolly Lopunny. Special attack is just a dump phase after I put 144 into HP, which is the maximum investment I can do to get an odd number. So the 12 are my throwaway points, and everything else is calculated to be a number that I want it to be at. Uh, so we're going to move on from here. We've got a Choice Banded Scizor, Technician, Bullet Punch, U-Turn, Aerial Ace, and Defog. Very similar set to last time. Um, at one point, I was contemplating a Swords Dance Scizor, but Scizor is very easy to wall by uh, several Pokemon on my opponent's team, so he's definitely going to be a hit and runner, and there's no better way to hit and run with Proto than to run a Choice Band on him. So he's running a very standard set with max HP, max attack. Um, at level 100, you don't run exactly max HP, you run 248, um, but at level 50, 252 to get uh, an odd number for switch ins on Stealth Rock. Uh, max attack, I'm not. I'm not playing games with speed. There's not really a whole lot of people I intend to outspeed with Scizor in this matchup. So he's uh, he's got Bullet Punch for that priority U-turn if I think they're going to switch. Aerial Ace if I'm opting to stay in against a Chestnut. Now, I could outspeed Chestnut. He is one speed lower than me. But I predict that he's going to actually invest more than just a little bit of speed into Chestnut. I think he's going to invest... Um, enough to try and outspeed Politoed again. Now, guys, here's where I'm going to play a little bit of mind games with Miguel. Um, I'm bringing Dollar Bills back, Politoed, Choice Scarfed Drizzle. He's running Scald, Ice Beam, Endeavor, and Protect. I know that seems like an absolutely bizarre set for a Choice Scarfer. Let me explain. Dollar Bills is basically going to do nothing but Scald. However, there are very specific circumstances where I might run something else, and it's usually going to be following a switch, and it's usually going to be when I'm almost dead. So, Scald is basically always going to be what I do. 
There are a few circumstances where Ice Beam might be better, but they're very rare. Endeavor is if I opt to switch in on something, almost die, and then Endeavor will be the most amount of damage that I can pull off if I'm outspeeding the person. My phone is buzzing. I'm gonna ask it kindly to shut the f*** up. So, um, we've got Protect on there, because if I can switch in on a Megalopunny Fake Out and then uh, go for a Protect the next round as he goes for a High Jump Kick, I will really appreciate that. And, um... You know, he could work around it with a couple of return plays or something like that. And that, you know, it's unfortunate. That's why I have to think about it. I really need to think about whether or not I run, want to run Protect. But there's a reason I'm running Choice Scarf. If he brings Victini, there's a good chance he'll lead with Victini. He leads with Victini. I've seen... he's He plays Victini a lot, not just in the GBA, but in other battles too. And he leads with him a lot. So there's a chance he'll lead with him. I'm going to assess that at game time and decide whether or not it's right for me to lead with Dollar Bills in that scenario. But um, with the EV spread that I have right now, um, I will outspeed a max speed timid Victini, and I will one hit KO with Scald. And at 80 HP investment and four special defense, I can survive a Bolt Strike and a Thunder from him. So if he's Scarfed, he won't kill me, and I'll kill him back with Scald. If he just thinks he's going to go for a safe U turn or something, he will die. So this is my hope. You know, if all things go right in my lead matchup preparations, I might be able to take out Victini first turn. That's just, that's hopeful, wishful thinking. I don't think he'll be predicting the choice Scarf Dollar Bills. We've got the Assault Vest Gudra. Now, Gudra has proven to me time and time again that don't go weird sets. He's hard enough to take down without playing some weird shenanigans. If Miguel wants to force some dangerous switches to try and work around Gudra, that's fine. Um, he's got a lot of Pokemon in here that can do a lot of damage to Gudra, even though he's a very tanky Pokemon, so I'm not going to be looking to really have him wall anything. I'm just going look to look to him to be a safe switch in against most of his special threats. He's running 252 uh, HP, 252 special attack with 4 in special defense. Um, he's running Draco Meteor because normally I run Dragon Pulse, but Bunny Sword is not a stay-in Pokemon, not against Miguel's team. His offense is very offensive, and I'm not going to have a lot of option for that. He's going to be switching a lot too, so I'm going to catch him on the switch and try and do as much damage as I can and switch out. Sludge Bomb is the best stab option to cover Florgis. I was considering running Iron Tail, but I don't think it's worth the drop in accuracy for only a little bit more damage. I was also considering running a physical set since I'm running Sap Sipper. Um, but it actually just ends up being walled by a lot of the Pokemon that uh, my other Pokemon... My physical sweepers can take on almost anybody um, on this guy's team except some of his walls. Bunny Sword can take on those walls, so there's no reason for me to run physical in this, in this scenario. Flamethrower uh, hits super effective. Any Pokemon that resists or is immune to Draco Meteor and Sludge Bomb, namely that's um, Dewblade and a Scavalier. And then Thunderbolt is the last slot to take on Tentacruel, who otherwise resists everything there except uh, Draco Meteor. If I don't want to uh, lock myself into a situation where I've lowered my special attack with Draco Meteor. My last slot is Remix. Remix is once again running the leftovers. Oh, I want to tell you guys, I was very seriously considering running a Choice Scarf here. I may still change it. I haven't decided yet. I also was considering running a choice ban. Here's the thought processes here. Uh, if I can get Remix to copy Mega Lopunny, that would be huge. Um, especially if it's choice banded. If I managed to get a choice banded Mega Lopunny on my side, it would crush his entire team. It would absolutely decimate it. That said, that's risky and it assumes that he'll think that I'm Choice Scarfed, and he might not, and it might be really easy for him to get caught seeing that he's not Choice Scarfed one way or the other. I'm not really sure. It also means that if I'm running this set, I, I mean, right now you might notice I don't have any Stealth Rockers. I can switch Remix in on someone like a Hippowdon and get up um, Entry Hazards if I really want to. He becomes a versatile switch option for me, which my team doesn't really have a lot of. I, I still might change it though. I haven't decided. It's not. It's still game time at the moment. We we haven't decided everything yet. Uh, if you look at my EV IV spread, I'm running a standard EV distribution to maximize um, Ditto's stats here. I'm actually gonna draw. I don't know why I'm doing this. 
Um, I'm just dropping a few. Oh no, actually, I do understand that. That's the yeah, I just wanted 153. One extra point is not going to do anything. Just put the rest in the special. But it doesn't really matter. None of the other stats really matter unless it comes down to a Ditto versus Ditto, Ditto struggle war, which is not going to happen. So uh, these stats don't matter that much. HP is the only thing that really matters. The reason I'm running the IV spreads I am is so that if I switch into something with hidden power, it becomes hidden power flying for the chestnut once again. Um, it's going to be a tough battle, guys. Um, my team has gone through a lot of reiterations, but I'm hoping this one will do the best it possibly can. So this match uh, will be happening late night my time, so I'm a little bit tired. So let's hope that doesn't factor into the match either. I uh, hope to see you guys support. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would have brought anything different, what set ideas you kind of had for this matchup. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.